Hi, Ian. Um, can, uh, why don't you show us uh, some of the code that, that you've uh, got ready to, to demonstrate? Okay. Uh, I've been working in Rust using uh, Blake 3 and Goldilocks 448 with a package called Captain Proto, which is the next version of protocol buffers written by the same person. So what, what is uh, Goldilocks compared to uh, other uh, types of encryption? So it's a public private key system that uses uh, a 448 bit uh, public private key. And the reason to, to use such a large key um, is normal, or to not use it with such a large key is normally that it's slow. But Goldilocks has been optimized to run very fast on parallel processors. And it's a, uh, one of those demonstrably um, nothing up my sleeve uh, crypto uh, systems. And it's fast and it's good. So we wanted to use something that was going to be more future proof than um, known insecure public private key systems like SEC 256 K1. It's known to be insecure. And I guess Blake 3 is also pretty computationally efficient. Uh, Blake 3 is one of the fastest hashing systems. It was uh, one of the competitors against uh, Kekak, which later became SHA-3. Um, and it runs faster and more flexibly uh, than uh, Kekak does. Um, it, it also has uh, a, a bunch of optimizations uh, going for it. And it's uh, been demonstrated to be very secure and it's been around for a long time also. Right, and, and what's the difference between, what, what is Captain Protobuf? So, Protobuf was a method of encoding uh, data to be sent on the wire. Uh, there's a serialization process for strings and then they, they, they pack the data very efficiently. Um, and there was a bunch of library variations uh, the person who designed it at Google uh, went on uh, to join a smaller company and he designed Captain Proto to be the next generation of everything that he found as limitations in Protobuf. So it's even faster, it goes from memory to network, across the network, and then back to memory. Uh, there isn't really a packing, uh, a large packing step and there's no essentially almost no serialization. So it's very, very fast and efficient. And it also encodes in a deterministic way, which you can't always get on with, uh, with protobuf, right? Well, protobuf's non-determinism is mostly in the UTF-8 serialization, uh, especially nested data. Uh, Captain Proto is very, very deterministic. It has a very clear one-to-one -one mapping on all the data and it doesn't really interfere with the data. It's more, um, it, we're, we're gonna copy it from memory for you. Okay, terrific. Okay, so why don't you show us what you've done? So I'm gonna start off by cleaning the Rust environment that I'm in so you can see it compile. And this is using more th than the three libraries because those libraries have dependencies, but uh, we have very, very little external code so that it's easier to see what's going on and uh, it's, we want to have a smaller contained system. So this code is uh, going to be unified base for both client and server. And that means that the wallet, the nodes and the client are all going to be coming from a similar code base in Rust. So I'll run the client here and this, the code has some, some data in it. And this is what is actually sent across the wire for, for protobuf, or for Captain Proto. Um, and this, uh, this is a binary format, which shows up as gobbledygook on the screen. But when I send it to the server version of the code, it gets unpacked. Okay, so what this demonstrates, I guess, is that we have these, these uh, Captain Proto templates written that uh, help us to encode uh, uh, transactions and other kinds of things that we would, uh, records and things like that that go onto the blockchain. Uh, this uh, this uh, code that is running here to demonstrate uh, takes an example of this, uh, creates a message 
and transmits it uh, across uh, the network and then decodes it on the other side. So this is demonstrating the kind of uh, communications uh, functionalities that we're looking for with this message format. So the top section of this code here um, is actually the protobuf format. And then yeah. down below is the captain proto format where we have a bunch of objects instead of a bunch of messages. And these objects then have uh, variations. And basically, in order to take what we have today and turn it into a full blockchain, we, we basically need to uh, make this more networked. And then uh, we need to be able to save and restore state and then share that state. And the Kaplan Proto is the biggest part of the definitions and the data and the messages that can be sent. Um, and once the data is defined, it's easier to, to relay that data inside Captain Proto. So what we have is the, the beginnings of the, the blockchain and it is sending data using our libraries. Okay, great. Uh, why, why, did, why did we choose Rust here? So there was some advantages for other languages um, like uh, Go is um, very good at uh, network concurrency, um, but I've seen some really bad code written in Go for blockchain. Uh, Rust has a very good reputation uh, for speed, and it also has some beautiful properties for these things we could call containers. Um, most of the data is actually immutable. In, when you're making an immutable blockchain, it's really good to not have um, a bunch of data being serialized and converted and packed and repacked, uh, stored and synced in uh, clumsy ways. Rust is very clean, it's very tight, and it makes you know if the data is being changed or not. So it's kind of uh, developed a good reputation because it does the kind of thing that we're looking for uh, directly. And Blake 3 was actually written in Rust first. Uh, and then Goldilocks was written in C first. Um, and then there was a, um, a Rust, uh, Rust variation. But Blake 3 was actually written in, uh, in Rust to begin with because it's a very, very tight, clean system. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, that's, that's probably enough for, for now. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can do this on a, on a fairly regular basis every uh, few weeks or so and, and just uh, let people know uh, where we are in the project. One, one last thing that I wanted to show is oh, that sure. there's a, um, from the Captain Proto files, it actually generates a bunch of Rust bindings based on that network data. And that's a lot of the work that you would have to do for, for most uh, library marriage. Uh, this is true of GUI, it's true of most network code, it's true of games and engines, it's true of, of, of uh, lots of different types of code. And this actually generates the Rust code for us and contains all the bindings and methods. Um, and it creates a bunch of getter and setter. So once we have a, a very clean core foundation, it, it scales very quickly. Just we need all the moving parts to, to glue together and connect uh, before uh, we can get things running faster. Yeah, foundations always take a while. Okay, well, great. Well, I'll, uh, I'll let you get back to what you do best. So Thank you. Uh, talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.